Hi, I'm Chris Carlson. I'm one of the senior FAEs here at Altium, and this is the third installment on our thermal management series. In episode one, we looked at heat transfer, and we developed the concept of a thermal resistance, which is very useful in calculating the rise above ambient temperature of all of the components in our design. In episode two, we looked at a practical example where we properly sized a heat sink for a component. And now in episode three, we're going to talk about components that are mounted directly on the board and how does the heat transfer through the board, how is it dissipated, and what are some other options that we have. So here's our little um, linear regulator circuit that we developed in our last episode. It's a 3.3 volt regulator being sourced with 5 volts. Um, we've cleverly chosen the load so that the power dissipation in the regulator is 1 watt. Now, here is the component mounted on the circuit board. This would be representative of something like a D-pack. And um, so this would be soldered directly to the board. Then we have some thermal vias conducting the heat to the secondary side of the board. And we'll talk about the radiated heat from there. And then we'll look at a heat sinking application as well. Now, in previous episodes, we've um, talked about how we can represent the heat transfer as a current flowing through a system and how the um, impedances that the heat flow um, sees in the circuit can be represented as resistances and how ambient temperature can be looked at as a biasing voltage to bring the whole system up to a particular um, temperature. So, Let's um, draw that little circuit for this example. Here we have our current source dual, um, where we are um, have one watt of heat flowing through the system. The first um, resistance that we meet is the junction to case resistance. So I'll call that R theta junction to case. Then we have the via barrels here. And I'll call that R theta via. And then we have the radiating plane on the secondary side. I'll call that R theta rad. Then we have our ambient temperature, which just like in the past, we've been modeling as a voltage source that biases us up to the ambient temperature. And we will call that T ambient. Now, this is a fairly simplified um, model. Um, there's a few other things that could come into play here. Our lateral heat transfer, if the component is mounted a considerable distance from our thermal vias. And if this plane is very large, we might also want to model the lateral heat transfer. But the math for that is exactly the same as we will see for calculating through our via barrels. Now, as, we, uh, as the heat passes through the system, we get various temperature drops. So the first temperature that we realize is the junction temperature of our semiconductor device. Then once we flow through the um, thermal resistance junction to case, we have the temperature of our case. Then we have the thermal resistance of our vias, and that brings us down to the temperature of the secondary side of the board. And then we have here our ambient. Now, just as we saw in the previous episode, the manufacturers of components and heat sinks make this very easy on us. They actually provide us numbers for the thermal resistances of their components. So here I've got the data sheet for my LM3940. A um, couple of useful numbers here. Under recommended operating conditions, my maximum junction temperature is specified as 125 degrees C. So TJ max equals 125 degrees C. That's the maximum operating temperature that we can never exceed. Then we have the um, thermal resistance from junction to case, which is published as 0 0.8 degrees C per watt. 
Now we come to the thermal resistance of a via. Now in episode one, we talked about heat transfer through fluidic systems, which can be a liquid like water or air, as well as heat transfer through solid um, objects. When we're looking at the heat transfer through a solid, the thermal resistance is um, the distance traveled through the solid, in this case, our via barrel length. Um, divided by the area, surface area, in this case of our via, and then divided by the thermal conductivity constant. If we plug and chug on those numbers, the thermal resistance of our via comes out to 261 degrees C per watt. Now, when we're looking at the um, this thermal plane radiating into space, now we have to go back to the model of a surface radiating into a fluidic environment. And you'll recall that that's equal to one over H, which is our um, heat transfer coefficient times the surface area that's radiating. radiating. Now, a good first order number for our heat transfer coefficient for a copper surface to air is 0 0.001 watts per centimeter squared degree C. So, um, one over this is going to give us a thermal resistance of 1,000 watts, excuse me, 1,000 degrees C centimeter squared per watt. It's a pretty big number. Now, um, but keep in mind, that's one square centimeter. That's a pretty small surface area. Now, in order to um, bring these numbers down to a reasonable value, you'll remember that for our heat sink, we had in the order of 16 degrees C um, per watt. Um, for our thermal interfaces that we used in our last example, they were in the um, less than one degree C per watt. What we need to do is increase this, this surface area. So if we want to bring this down to kind of a reasonable value, something like 10 degrees C per watt, we need to have a fairly large surface area. So let's consider a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter surface area. So that's going to give us 100 centimeters squared. That's going to bring us down to the range of 10 degrees C per watt, which is reasonable. Um, Let's also consider these thermal vias. So we've got 261 degrees C per watt. Well, I've shown two here. Now, just like equal value resistors in electrical circuit sharing current equally, um, all things being equal, these two vias will share the thermal load equally. So with the two vias, that brings that down to half, which is about 130 degrees C per watt, but that's still pretty high. Now, We've all seen thermal pads um, with semiconductors mounted to them that kind of looks like Swiss cheese. This, these calculations are for a 12 mil via. I can fit quite a few 12 mil vias in a fairly small area. So it's not unreasonable to think of this as a way to get the heat out. If I were to put a dozen or so 12 mil vias to my um, 100 centimeter square plane on the, on the secondary side of my board, um, that would potentially be a palatable solution. However, what that requires is um, that I have a large surface area available on the secondary side. Now, if all of your components are mounting on the primary side, that may be a good solution. Um, another way you can think of this is if all of my parts are on the primary side and I just have a small area, we might be able to put a thermal pad in here and actually mount the board to a heat sink, which would be another potential solution. I did see another solution the other day that I thought was pretty neat. Um, Avid makes um, surface mount 
heat sinks that are kind of cool. And they actually make one for this D-pack configuration. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. Um, you'll notice this heat sink um, has quite a bit of surface area. It actually has goal wings that come over and down and there are some cuts in it to make um, plenty of surface area. And the way this works, this was intended for a D-pack type configuration, is if we have our component mounted on the board to a thermal pad. Now I'm going to draw this as though we were looking at this D-pack from left to right. We would see the component mounted here and as we look at the face we would see the three terminals. Now the way th that this heat sink mounts, it's very compact when you really think about this because it comes in here over the top of other surface mount components. So I could have other components mounted in here. Comes down and up, goes over the top of my D-pack, comes back down and up. That's a pretty palatable solution when real estate is at a premium. Um, so when we're dealing with surface mount components on a board and we need to get the heat out, you know, there's several options to consider. You know, our um, thermal plane on the bottom side of the board radiating um, may very well be a palatable solution for some applications. However, um, if we don't have the real estate, then we need to start looking at other types of heat sinking that we can actually mount to the component or on the board. If you have any further questions about this topic, please feel free to um, respond in the comments section below. I'm Chris Carlson. Thanks for your time.